Hey y'all, it's Amanda and the Hubs, and we are going in here at McKay's Books, okay, on Paper Mill in Knoxville. Well, that's how you get in here. Hey, the Hubs, everybody. Hey. We love to see I it. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh oh. <laughs> so, this is the start of a vlog. We haven't really done an intro. Yeah. We haven't really started an intro of this vlog, but. What better time than right now? So we're gonna go up in here. We're watching LOTR today. We ain't got much time to be in here because we're running behind. But this is McKay's in Knoxville. It's packed as usual. Wow, it is packed. Yeah, honey, they, everybody's always in here. Hey. So we're here. We're gonna go in here and see what we can find. The hubs, he's excited about it. So yeah. we got at least 30 minutes to kind of peruse. Then we'll go eat and right. try to make it to our movie. So hi, the hubs. Hey. Hey. All right, we're gonna go in here. Check this out. Yoda. <laughs> so see, this is like, they got like a whole upstairs. I think I've showed y'all before, but we can go upstairs. Here's the hubs. All these Legos, Lego bags and stuff. Lots of pop toys, things like that. So, let's see what else we can get into. This is like all the marvels. Yeah, it's all Oh yeah. A lot of the Marvel stuff. Let's see. I'm not really like a Marvel person, but they always look cool. Oh my goodness, look. We've got all the little, little plushies and stuff. Oh my goodness. Oh man, he would love this little blippy. <laughs> oh wow, that's cool. He would, wouldn't he? <laughs> Yeah, we probably, yeah. We don't need it. We're not going to get it. Yeah. And then another one. But. Look at Chrissy with the unicorn stuff. Oh, yeah. Chrissy with, like, the unicorn stuff. Um, that's a no. Um, that's a no. Lindsay. Come with dinosaurs. Honey. <laughs> uh, really, guys? That's terrifying. I would say. <laughs> no I'm wonder Lindsay it's here. on this is, like, that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, no wonder it's here. Um. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So. You can kind of see we've got like all the different shelves. And there's like a way upstairs. The Christian fiction stuff's like on the other side. Yeah, there's like some Bible reference stuff. And then at the very end, there's more Christian books down there. And then there you go, all these things. It's like a book lover's dream in here. <laughs> Poetry. Oh, you can't really see. I'm walking too fast. But they've got puzzles, board games. And then, of course, this is where we're at for the hubs. He's wanting to look at all the uh, yeah, so gaming yeah. stuff that they've got. We've got more Star Wars stuff over here. Oh, there's that, that Harry Potter um, train set. It's cool. Oh, wow. Look at that. Uh, Let's see. What have we got here? Oh, that's cool. Remember, like, Power Rangers and stuff? With the little Star Wars. That's cool. What? Oh, my. Big picture of Squirrel. <laughs> all these games and things and uh, that little like case Christmas over there ornaments. yeah christmas ornaments those are cute uh, i love christmas ornaments though uh, cute things cool. that little case over there is where we can look oh, whenever yeah. they move <laughs> i'm cracking it it's funny all these different little pop toys oh. yeah so this is basically the whole more store. That's cool. All the books. <laughs> we love to see it. Over here is like a lot of the electronics and stuff. Of course, it's our checkout. So, all right. So, so far I found this Agatha Christie Cricket House. Let me know if you read this. It's only like, it's only like $4 and 50 cents. So, yeah. You already okay. know. <laughs> I spotted Blathers. We had to get him, so. Love uh, it. He's a little owl that's in the museum. In oh, Animal I was going to say, where's his name? But the name's on the tag. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, he's the main owl in the the library slash the, you know, the, the museum. He is literally yeah. the museum guy. Yeah. Uh, but he's one, of my, he's one of my favorite. <laughs> well, it might as well. I don't know why they, you know what? They don't have a library I today. Know it. They need a lot. Well, actually, it's a library kind of for, like, collectibles. It's not actually yeah. a book library, but you got you know the fossils the insects the art the museum so it's a it's a you know it's not book library but it's all you know collectible then we got uh oh, what's his name Cap'n 
He's the little guy on the boat. Little... Hey, <laughs> oh, wow. He's on the boat. Cool. He does like daily boat rides. So I did get yeah. some books, as you already know. Picked up these uh, two Colin Cobble books. This one is The Inn at Ocean's Edge and Twilight at Blueberry Barrens. Barrens? <laughs> Blake over here like, hey. Um, oh, why are these women looking away? You know, he's got somebody looking away like, <laughs> come on. Okay, Can't Help Falling by Kara Isaac. She's a Christian romance author I really want to try to get into. So that was only $3. Then here's what Blake's going to really like the cover of. The Vault Between Spaces by Shauna Schroeder. I don't know. I don't very, know very pretty. Not, it's like know, a Christian colors. fantasy. I like to see the little, only like five bucks. See the key I right there. Couldn't vault, leave it. So I, I cool. couldn't leave it. It was only five fifty or something. Then I got Lady Jane Disappears by Joanna Davidson Palatano. Perfect condition, so it was like seven dollars, so it was a good price. This is a Christian historical. And I've read one of her books before and really like or two of her books and I like it, so. Um, and then of course I got this Agatha Christie I showed y'all in there. Um Cricket House. And it was like four fifty. So yeah. Fifty bucks later. <laughs> That's what I got for the haul. Okay. But so we're gonna go eat. Okay. We did find we're, a couple of knickknacks. Yeah. Sadly, but, the Zelda slash more, they had more knickknacks the, the one time Amanda came. Yeah. Uh, so they, they were pretty much wiped out. Yeah. Unfortunately. But hey, uh, you never know what you're gonna find in there, so it changes oh, from week to week, you know it? Apparently. So what's wrong? No, I was saying that they had those, but those are probably just in the box. Oh. See how they had uh, the cat? I was like, Man. I don't know. They're adding more. Oh, it's time plays your character. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. All right, we'll be back with some updates. Vlog update, we just ate Chick-fil-A on the way to the theater. We were in Turkey Creek. If you know Knoxville, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, Turkey Creek, Farragut area. Uh, well, come on, lady. That's a guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's got a beard, man. I don't know what it's I was thinking. It's because a pink shirt. It was kind of. the hair. <laughs> yeah, he had really curly hair for an older man. What the heck? That's weird. My bad. I mean, really curly hair. It looked like a let's, let's keep, let me move. Okay. That was a guy uh -oh. with a beard, so. <laughs> this is the theater we're going to, okay? This is the Pinnacle, it's got IMAX too, but we're not saying this in IMAX, but Pinnacle Theater. Okay. And I was like, why do they not have a poster for this movie so we can take a picture? <laughs> but this is the theater. So, we hadn't been, actually, I've never been to see Lord of the Rings in theaters. The Hubs has. He don't think he saw the first one in theaters. Oh. Hey. What is this black What is this? Hey. Look at this one right up front. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there like a picture poster that would be cool? I don't see one. Man. Foolery. Foolery. We are just so excited, though, to go in here and watch this movie. I cannot wait. So, yeah, Amanda's things. never seen it, so in theaters. in theaters. And it's the extended edition, so it's like three and a half hours. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and go in. This is a long movie. And settle in. So, in yeah. All right, this is the inside of the theater. Hey, say hey, Hub. Hey. And look how big this is. <laughs> like, it's huge. So, we are theater 18. This is a big old drink. <laughs> you don't say, look, you get free refill, you better be getting it. You know what I mean? For the price you pay. I ain't bought that like this in a long time. So, yeah, we're going. We're in here. It's so, look how dark it is. Look out to show them how close we are up here. Okay, first of all, <laughs> you can see how far back, how close up we are, because look how many we got behind us. Like, I mean, we're like right like here. Right here. <laughs> I mean, this is a big screen right here, so. It'll expand too. <laughs> so, so, hey, Hubs. Hey. <laughs> I know we just ate, but man, I like, look, I need provisions for three and a half hours. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you get a free refill, you better be getting your money's worth. Hey! <laughs> hey, do it! <laughs> hey. hey! Walking out the movie theater. We'd love to see it. What'd you think, Hubs? It was great. Such a long hey. movie. But I'm trying to get him to let me go to the bookstore. Come on, son! He's wanting to go home, but uh, your girls need to go to the bus store, so. All right, y'all. Hey, we're back. Hey, we back. So, we're going home, even though I want to go to the bus store. I said you can go tomorrow. I want <laughs> to go to, like, I know we went to McKay's, but I want to go to, like, 
books a million, which they have Barnes and Noble actually up here, but I don't have Barnes and Noble membership. Anyway, so what you think, Hubs? Really good. It was so good, wasn't it? I was teary yeah, we were we were pretty close. I didn't realize at first it was kind of our eyes had to adjust. The yeah, screen. I didn't realize how close our tickets would have but been. Were. I will say the sound in there, it was Top -notch. amazing. Like the yeah. theater we went a couple a month ago was not as good. The sound was very low. Yeah, it was. And that okay. Star Wars movie, it was not like, yeah. this one was like, you were in the battle. <laughs> you were fighting the orcs. You were literally there with uh -oh. the sound effects. So <laughs> yeah, over, over time, our eyes adjusted to the screen. It, yeah. was, it was good. It was just like, you know, like an IMAX type of thing. Yeah, but it was so great. We probably could have sat a few there rows back. There was so but, many people there. And everybody clapped at the end. But the sound <laughs> was just top. Uh, and I haven't been in the I always well, tear really up at the end. I tear up when Sam, he's like, you know, maybe he's like trying to drown. <laughs> and I don't that that and Gandalf, even though we've seen it a million times, we know the outcome, but it's just like you can't help but like tear up a little bit. Sam uh, literally is the hero of the whole thing. Yeah. He's like, I made a promise, Mr. Frodo. Uh -huh. And what happens with Barmer in the end always makes us cry too. It's sad. Yeah. I hold this phone. Anyway, yeah, so we just. Going home, hour and a half drive. So, but it was worth it. The theater's worth it. So, it was nice to have like a day out. So, yeah, we are on the way home. I didn't get my boba today either. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't even thinking about boba. <laughs> I really wanted right. to get a boba today. Ugh, this phone, I swear. It's been all over the place. It's not been the best vlog, but we're here. We're here. So, yeah, hopefully I can finish a book tonight too. We'll see. I really want to finish that Denise Hunter book that I was talking about in the last vlog that I didn't get to finish. Reasons. But, yeah. We, oh, we watched two movies in two days. Yeah, two look days. at us. We are movie watching people. What? Yeah, Amanda's <laughs> like, a movie watcher now. Yeah. Uh, I've always had pretty, like, bad anxiety about movies, but, like, these are movies I kind of know what's happening. So, yeah. Anyway. But, yeah, that's it for us. Anything else for the vlog hubs? That's it. That's it. All right. We'll be, I will update y'all later. Hey y'all. All right. We are back with some updates. I did finish Denise Hunter's book. Okay. Uh, Love Unscripted. I was like, what's the title? <laughs> Love Unscripted and really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Uh, gave it four stars. It wasn't a favorite, but I still really enjoyed it. And give, uh, oh, I already said I gave it four stars. So why am I saying that again? Anyway, I still really enjoyed it. <laughs> so yeah, the only thing I didn't love in the ending, if you haven't seen all my full thoughts on this book, I have definitely have more uh, in the last vlog. Um, but essentially this was like a fake dating, in case you haven't seen that vlog, fake dating Hollywood, girl's a writer, has her book being turned into a Hollywood movie, and the guy that's playing the main lead, she doesn't really like him, and because of his, like, history in the industry, right, and like what the tabloids have said about him, the type of guy he is, and so he kind of finds out that right away, because she's on speakerphone when she's talking smack. And so they end up working together, and he says, well, let's fake date to improve my image, and you know, this will help for you and your social following for your next book, all of that. So they fake date, and they start to find feelings and all this stuff while he's working on the scripts and stuff with her, and all that good stuff. The only thing I didn't love in the end is, <laughs> <laughs> the third act breakup. Now, I'm fine usually with the third act breakup. It's not like a deal breaker for me. It, it's expected in most of your romance books, yes. I love when it's not there that, like, adds something for me or if it's, like, really small. But in this, it was, like, miscommunication was the reason. So, I didn't love that, but it's okay. It's all right. Uh, something happens, basically, where you're like, what? Why didn't you just talk to each other? <laughs> but typical books, right? And it was fine. It was fine. I'm not, you know, but that's why it's not a perfect five-star read for me. But yeah. So anyway, but y'all seen I was at the bookstore, okay? I had to take my mom to town. So waiting on her, but I said, I'm gonna go to the bookstore while you're over here, okay? So I went in there specifically looking for this book and I found it. And it is Stuart Turton's new book, The Last Murder at the End of the World. Y'all, first of all, 
Y'all know I really liked Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. This book number one's not gonna get ready probably till August, but I really wanted to get it. It has like the blue sprayed edges. Isn't that awesome? Love that. And so, yeah, my friends Chrissy and Lindsay, they are reading this right now and I need to know at some point. <laughs> They're like, wow, this is wild. And uh, I know that Holly really enjoys this author as well. So yeah, I'm really excited to kind of see where this lands for me, but I want to go ahead and get it because of the special edition it was and just have it ready whenever I get there, okay? I really don't even know what this is about. It says, outside the island, there is nothing. The world was destroyed by a fog that swept the planet, killing anyone it touched. I'm going to turn this off so you don't hear me good. On the island, it is idyllic. 122 villagers and three scientists living in peaceful harmony. The villagers are content to fish, farm, and feast, to obey their nightly curfew, to do what they're told to do by the scientists, until, to the horror of the islanders, one of the beloved scientists is found brutally stabbed to death, and then they learn that a murder has triggered a lowering of the security system around the island, the only thing that was keeping the fog at bay. If the murder isn't solved within 107 hours, the fog will smother the island and everyone on it. But the security system has also wiped everyone's memories of exactly what happened the night before, which means that someone on the island is a murderer and they don't even know it. Look here. It's giving, like, what? Is this kind of like almost like apocalyptic <laughs> like what <laughs> is it like the murder mystery but kind of like a sci-fi okay look murder mystery wrapped in a sci-fi allegory okay this will be a definite out of my comfort zone read and i'm here for it so post-apocalyptic oh my goodness <laughs> yes post-apocalyptic murder mystery okay yeah so yeah i picked this one up really excited to see how that goes um and then i picked up the davenports okay by crystal what's her name marquise <laughs> it's covered by the bargain sticker it's only six dollars chrissy loved this and really enjoyed it and so i've heard that it's clean as far as sexual content so yeah we're here for this here for this it's super cute um and this is set in 1910 the davenports are one of the few black families of immense wealth and status in a changing united states their fortune made through the entrepreneurship of william davenport a former enslaved man who founded the davenport carriage company years ago now the davenports live surrounded by servants crystal chandeliers and endless parties finding their way and finding love even when they're not supposed to i just kind of learned more about this family and all the dramatics that it's probably going to give okay and now uh, look at me picking up a classic what i don't know but look miriam did a whole review video on this book saying how much she loved it and i was like well i need something else i had a ten dollar coupon on 50 and i needed to add something to the list and that's what i did shirley by charlotte bronte it was only six dollars so reasons picked up was deeper by dane ortland real change for real sinners and so yeah this is so this book uh if you didn't know i absolutely loved his christian nonfiction. uh what is it i just lost title what is it called oh gentle and lowly <laughs> okay yeah gentle and lowly and this one says, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Second Peter 3, 18. And it's talking all about how Christians grow. It's, he's going to encourage us to fix our eyes on Jesus in the battle against sin, casting themselves upon his grace and living up their invincible, invincible identity in Christ. So yeah, adding another nonfiction to my shelf. So that's what I picked up at the bookstore. I'm burning up already. <laughs> I cannot. Look, I'm getting red and everything. I'm going to drive over here, pick up my mom, and then I've got groceries I got to pick up at five so i don't know how much more we'll have in this vlog but it is what it is uh i am going to try to read a little bit more in savannah scott's book tonight because Lindsay lamas my rom-com queen has got to chapter 10 and i need to catch up so yeah hopefully i can get to that i don't know if i'll get to the cookie crumbles today it might have to be tomorrow so yeah that's it for me and i'll update you guys later actually okay i drove over here to home goods i'm waiting on mom but p.s i have a p.s okay while i was at the bookstore i want to share it to you guys so I overheard this woman who works at the bookstore, Books A Million, talking to these young girls and she asked how old they were because they were looking for recommendations for romance. And she said she was 16. And the lady was talking to her and said, you know, hey, you know, these books over here that they were looking at, she's like, I would recommend this really for like a 21 plus. Like, actually, I wouldn't recommend them at all. But we would not be. Okay, y'all should have seen them. But I thought it was really nice that she was trying to explain the spice level to these girls. They were still into it. They saw it on TikTok. They were just really wanting to read them. And I thought I overheard her saying something about 21 plus, And I thought she was saying, like, you had to be 
21 plus because she was talking about the front, you know, and I was like, oh, are they like putting a limit, age limit on these books? These dark, it was like dark romance. And I, I, I was like, what? And so after I got, after she got done talking to them, I walked up, I was like asking her where the Stuart Turton book was because I couldn't find it. And she, I was like, so question, I said, were you saying to them girls that like there's an age limit or something on these books that they were looking at? She said, no, I wish there was, but you know, cause it's really just, really dark romance that they really don't need to read but she said you know uh we can't control them purchasing it but um you know my manager just tries to say hey you know let these girls know what's in them just so they can make their own decision so they're aware before they go into this because she said you open page one or two and it's literally just like the darkest stuff you could read and i was like oh like a 50 shades book and she was like worse and i was like what <laughs> so i was like okay uh, I'm not expecting this, but, and again, I'm not shaming nobody that reads that stuff, but I'm just saying, like, these young girls are 16 years old, and, like, it always saddens me when I'm in the bookstore, and I see them talking about, oh, that's, they were like, oh, that's so spicy, I want to get that, you know, like, saying that stuff, and I'm like, it just reiterates how thankful I am to be sharing in this space clean reads so people can be aware. I know we've talked a lot about this, like, you know, it just, it's so important for me to like, let y'all know content now. Like it just really reiterates the mission of the channel, like that it's so well needed, you know? Um, because, you know, like I said, I told you before, I used to be the ones picking up, you know, the stuff, you know, the <laughs> secular spicy books, you know, I read Outlander and things like that. And I have read 50 Shades of Grey back in the day, you know, uh, but you know, now at 34 years old, I'm thankful that I don't read any of those things anymore. And I try to kind of use my testimony to say, you know, look, I came from this. I know what these books have. And now it's like, look, this is where I talk about the good clean reads that are al alternatives, right? Um, so people are aware. And so many of y'all have said that you never knew that they even existed, right? Because especially like when you go to like the Books of Man or the Barnes and Noble, the clean reads are really hard to find because they have big signs now that say spicy, book talk, you know, <laughs> romanticy, spice, you know, and the, like flames and all this stuff everywhere, you know, and it's just really hard to find anything that's clean. And a lot of them are like indie authors that wouldn't be in these stores. So, you know, it's just, it's so important that we're sharing this stuff and I'm really glad it just, it just really <laughs> reiterated, reiterated my like mission here on the channel because sorry, I'm burning up again. <laughs> it just was like, wow, another eye opening moment. But I, I really thought that was great that this bookseller was trying to let them know, you know, like, hey, like, you know, she was actually trying to recommend like even a Colleen Hoover compared to like these really dark, dark, dark stuff that they were, they would, they were looking at, you know, and that's saying something. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, I mean, I've read Colleen Hoover before. I did like It Ends With Us, but, you know, when I read it at the time, and I've read a lot of her books in the past. She's just not someone for me anymore because I read Clayton right now, but I was just like, wait, what? Because <laughs> she had it ends with us in her hand and trying to like steer them away from the other stuff. So it was just really eye opening. And she was telling me when I was talking to her, she said, yeah, the parents have no idea what's in these books, you know? And so we really try to let people know. And she was like comparing it to the uh, adult entertainment industry. I don't want to say that word, but she was trying to, you know, compare it to that. She said, you know, this, these books are really no different than that and these dark romances and I was like you preach into the choir sister I know exactly what you're saying and so I told her kind of about my YouTube and everything that I you know what I really try to do and let people know and and she thought that was really nice really great to see and I told her I said a lot of these books are not in your store because they're indie authors you know and so it, and it's just really hard to find clean romance in these stores and so anyway just throwing that out there I wanted to just share that because I thought that was a, just wild you know I've, I've seen it happen several times you know when we were at target blake and i saw these two young girls that were probably 14 to 16 years old i can't really tell you what age they are anymore but they were looking at those books too and it's like they're seeing it on tiktok <laughs> and so i'm not on tiktok i don't know what's on there as far as the book talk stuff i've seen some stuff on instagram but my algorithm knows i guess i read clean or Christian books because I don't hardly see the dark stuff anymore but yeah it, it's it's wild so you know I'm just 
thankful for our community, not just me, I'm thankful for our entire community here of creators who are letting people know about content in books and just really encouraging clean rom-coms and, you know, I mean, closed door stuff. Like, look, you know, some of these clean rom-com authors are writing a little bit more than what some others do. And it helps because some of the, I don't know how to say this, but like some of the authors write things that might borderline what I might be comfortable with, but at least for the people who love like the spice and stuff, they at least have an alternative to kind of like go down to another level. I don't know what you call peppers. <laughs> I don't know what pepper this will be, but like where it's still at least closed door, but they feel like it's a good story and a good book that, and there wasn't any true spice, like what they're used to reading. So you know, there's so many good options out there for actual closed door books that even if I'm not, if it's something I'm not comfortable with, at least there's going to be an option for people, you know, like to not have all that adult content. So I don't know. I'm on my soapbox again about it. It just, it, this is something that's so important in my heart. And I'm just so thankful for our community of, of readers here who just try to share, you know, the information about secular clean romance and just Christian clean romance. And then, you know, when we see something in the book, we're like, wait a minute, pump the brakes. Let's talk about it, you know, and being open and honest and transparent because, whoo, honey child, it's, you got to research. You have to research anymore. Like if I'm in a bookstore, I'm literally looking up on Goodreads to see who my friends have read it or like trying to find triggers and stuff. Like I don't have any triggers, but trying to find more so like content in books, you know, um, making sure that it's something that I'm not going to be like uncomfortable with, you know? Um, and I just think it's sad, especially like in young adult books, like you have to really research what's in it anymore. And used to, it didn't have to be like this. We were talking about this the other day, me and my friends we were saying, you know what, back in the day, we knew what the explicit books were because the way the covers look. Now you are deceived and have no idea. So it's just a whole thing. Sorry. I'm on my soapbox again. <laughs> But I just thought it was so awesome to see this bookseller at least letting these, trying to make a difference and letting them know. So go, sister. I, I mean, I didn't tell her my channel name. We didn't really get that far into it, but I just kind of told her, hey, you know, this is kind of my mission on my channel and what I let people know. So I love that you all are doing that. So that was nice to see, especially in a big bookstore like Books I Am. So all I had to say, uh, you know, we've all, we've talked a lot about this before. I have a video where I talked fully about secular romance whenever I tried to read uh, an Abby Jimenez book a long time ago last year. So I'm gonna link it if y'all want to watch that. It's kind of in the middle. It's time stamped. Um, yeah, we've talked a lot about this extensively. Oshina's had some really great discussions as well on her channel. I'm trying to find some of her videos where she's talked a lot about this. It's just, it has been a journey to let people know what's in these books. And I'm just so just, I'm even more committed to letting people know. Every time I'm out in public and seeing these young girls, I think about my 16 year old self not needing to be reading that stuff. And I'm like, I need to keep doing this, letting people know, so. Uh, parents, beware. That's all I got to say of what your kids are reading because you think it's one thing, but it ain't. <laughs> so, anyway, I'll update you guys later. Hey, y'all. I'm back. <laughs> it's time for the end of the vlog. I hope you enjoyed this video for what it was. It wasn't too, too long, but, you know, we're here at least a good 30 minutes, okay? I hope you enjoyed it. And we had some nice book hauls and uh, reading, finishing at least one book and still reading. A Fish Out of Water by Savannah Scott. So hopefully I can finish this book in the next couple of days. I'm reading with Lindsay. We're having the best, best time talking about all the funny things in this. I'm like this far in. So yeah, hopefully I can finish it. It's like 25% in in the next couple of days. We'll see. Um, I've just not had any time to read this weekend, you guys. It's crazy. Unless it was an audiobook, which, you know, the audiobook was Love Unscripted. So I was, at least I was able to finish that. I still need to write a review for that, but I just went ahead and marked it on Goodreads. So it's done. So at some point this week, I'll write a review for that whenever I get time. It's going to be a very busy week. So I don't really know what Thursday's video is going to look like if I even have one. So if I don't have one Thursday, Thursday. Hopefully I have one Saturday. You know, it's just one of those crazy weeks. I don't know what's happening. So I will definitely make an effort to try to get something filmed for this week, but I don't know what that's going to be. It might be a tag. It might be something really short. It might be a summer TBR. Who knows? So summer's upon us, you guys. And it really feels like it's already here. So anyway, but this book, I really need to know about the girls, so her name's Summer, about her past. So I talked about this book more so in the previous vlog. I, can't, I don't think I talked about it in here really, but I'm still reading this. 
we're gonna get through it. We're gonna get through it. This is book two in the Love Trippin' series, and it's a clean rom-com. Savannah Scott always makes you laugh. I can tell you that right now, because it's so funny. There's, like, these pranks going on between the guys. It's cracking me up. Like, I, I can't. <laughs> so, yeah, but I really want to know more about the girl's backstory. I feel like we're gonna have this slow burn romance. It's enemies to lovers and stuff, which, again, enemies to lovers is not always my favorite trope, but I'm interested to see where this goes. So, yeah, so hopefully I can finish that, and then... Uh, what else am I going to read this week? I really need to get through the cookie crumbles by like Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. So I may have to put that down to start on that book because that book, because I really want to get the review done for it and post it on Instagram this week. I think they were looking for like a release week review. So hopefully I can get that done and it should be, it should be pretty quick. It's a middle grade. It should be pretty quick. Um, I know I was already like three chapters in, but other than that, I don't know what this week holds. You know, I've got some buddy reads I needed to get, needed to get to. Honey, we'll just kind of go and see in the by and by what happens. Okay. But that's really about it for me. Like I said, I don't know what the videos are going to be next, but we'll be here. <laughs> Okay, I'll just try to plan something, honey. At this point, I don't know. This week just feels like chaos. I don't know. <laughs> but I hope that you enjoy this video. Let me know what you're reading, all that stuff. Let's kind of chat down below in the comments. Let me know what you're reading. Have you read any of the books that I've recently purchased in this video? And again, let's chat. You know, I know I talked a little bit about like the spice stuff. You know, if you have any comments on that, feel free to leave those down below as always. I know we're all very open and honest here on the channel, so... Yeah, um, hopefully that was okay to include in here. I thought that was a very good thing to see out in the wild, <laughs> okay? Like, I just experienced it firsthand. I was like, I need to tell them <laughs> because I've never really, like, paid much attention before in the past. Just kind of walk on by and I was like, my ears parked up. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me. I hope that you all have a fabulous week and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, y'all.